Thank you very much for your introduction. I served as a professor of uh, Korea Maritime and uh, Ocean University, and now I am working for uh, ABL. I'm very nice to see you all, and I'd like to congratulate on you on the hosting of World Ocean Forum 2021. I'm very pleased and honored to be part of this World Ocean Forum in the era of carbon neutrality. So I have listened to the various presentations and very informative and inspiring. Um, I'm very pleased to hear all these new ideas and the plans. In line with the previous presentations, I'd like to tell about um, the actual testing result uh, of the hydrogen fuel. So to introduce myself, uh, so currently I am working at the ABL at the GmbH. Uh, to briefly introduce what does this organization does, we are located in Australia. We have about 11,000 um, headcount, about 7,000 are researchers or focuses on the powertrain, how power system and digitization. And I'm here in charge of the high power system. What we focus on is ship, rail, railway, fuel cell, and the next generation transportation uh, for um, to do things, the powertrain development and the technological development. I also serve as the uh, vice president of the Greenhouse Gas Emission Reduction Strategic Council. Today, I'd like to talk about decarbonization In the context of the greenhouse gas emission, so many presenters already elaborated on hydrogen and hydrogen fuel. I'd like to talk a bit about the characteristics of hydrogen fuel and the test results. And based on these two pillars, I'd like to talk about the step forward to open the digital platform. How to build a digital platform? Let me. T uh, I will take an example of the actual demonstration cases. Um, I'd like to leave a message as a conclusion. So I don't need to talk about the rules and the regulations. The United States and uh, China have declared their commitment to achieve uh, carbon neutrality. So by 2030, the Korea aims to reduce carbon dioxide emissions by over 35 percent. This is the goal by, uh, declared by the Korean government. So this is an in international and a global campaign. Hydrogen energy does not contain no does not contain any carbon. So this is a completely carbon free and emission free. What we need to focus on is the specific characteristics we have to handle this very carefully. Otherwise, we might have some negative impact. So how to reduce those risks? This is the key area of focus for the researchers at ABL. Well, hydrogen does not contain any carbon at all, so there is no smoke. No visible smoke and it does not create any particulate matter or other pollutants such as polycyclical aromatic hydrocarbon. However, uh, it has such a wide range of uh, flammability limits if uh, the air contains 3 to 70 percent of hydrogen in a mixture that uh, it can turn into a flame. However, you need a very strong ignition energy. Otherwise, you cannot use a, you you cannot ignite. 
So this is a very two opposite size. So it is very difficult for to use this as a fuel. And as for this burning speed, it's extremely high flame speed. So it is 10 times faster than methane. It's 300 centimeter per second. As for the flame speed, So, hydrogen is explosive gas, but when it comes to ignition, it requires a significant amount of energy. So, it needs to, to burn this in an, a confined space, and it requires a very highly advanced technology. Since ignition and flame um, takes place very rapidly, um, it uh, most of the cases, well, it is involved in the stoichiometric um, reaction. So nitrogen and uh, oxygen in the air would go into the stoichiometric uh, combustion. So in the case, it will generate a very high amount of uh, NOx. So the optimization of the burning, since this is a decarbonization, although there is no carbon-related pollutants, in this case, well, NOx can be generated. So uh, we have to find ways to optimize the combustion. As you know, uh, NOx can have negative impact on human body immediately. Then given these properties and the characteristics of hydrogen, how can we get and generate energy using internal combustion engine? And what the process takes place in order to reduce pollutants and then properly control the pollutant. We have conducted an experiment in two different units of engine. The one is multiple cylinder engine, so it's sub scale and sub level um, output. And the other one is a high output, a large scale engine. We also conducted research on the combustion method as and through the after processing of the combustion, so we have conducted analysis of the reliability as well. And through this, we designed this co concept as well as the actual engine. As you know all too well, hydrogen has a very small particulate size. So that is why well, it can uh, go to any places. That is why the safety and reliability of the material as well as the long term Reliability was the area of focus, as, and the durability, long-term durability. So these are the areas we did reviewed in terms of the design in order to um, enhance the task accuracy. We also conducted calibration work. So this is our testing equipment. As reiterated by the previous presenters, hydrogen supply is not stable yet. That is why we use tank rory for the loading and unloading. So one is used for fuel cell and the other one was used for mm, the engine. And buffer tank was installed as well so for the stable supply with 300 bar of pressure. Going forward, for the high output testing for a longer period of time, we are planning to introduce a liquid hydrogen related storage facility. So this is the testing results I'd like to share with you. The method number 65 was used as a base. The hydrogen was mixed to this. So what kind of uh, results is delivered by hydrogen? Here you can see three different results. Uh, first, 
30% hydrogen mixed into natural gas. The next one is 80% hydrogen mixed into natural gas. And the third one is a completely hydrogen. When hydrogen accounts for 30%, And the carbon dioxide emission was down by 13 percent. When hydrogen content was 80 percent, then carbon emission went down by 52 to 54 percent. But here we could see derating, a significant derating. And when it's a completely hydrogen, no carbon emission. However, there was a very serious derating. In this case, how to prevent derating was another area, became another area of a focus in our research, how to uh, prevent a drop in the output. Well, derating is translated into efficiency. So if efficiency is too low, then you have to use another source of energy. In this case, the total energy consumption would not be virtually the same. That is why it's quite critical for us to raise the level of output. So based on this um, knowledge and understanding of hydrogen, I'd like to turn to digitization or digitalization, how to create a digital platform. Director Pei put such an emphasis on the rules and regulations. Before recognizing that, I think what we need to clarify the terminology here. Automation and uh, um, auto is different, and digitization and digitalization are different. Turning analog into digital signal this is what is called digitization. That's my definition. And using digitized information, you can perform a certain function. And this, this is what I define as digitalization. And if you can take advantage of digitalization to create completely new business concept, then this is what I would adopt as a digital transformation. Here you can design new modules, you can run a new tool, then that's the level of digital transformation. When we say um, digital digitization or digitalization in Korea, well, in Korean, the terms of turning into digital uh, represents all these three things. So those who worked on the rules and regulations, I'd like to ask them to well, clearly define what digitization, digitalization, and digital transformation means. Then uh, what is the process of digitization looks like? What does it look like? Whether it's tangible or intangible, digitization uh, turns everything into the digital format. We can take two different approach. The first, you need an extensive amount of uh, equipment. So you already have devices and equipment in order to work on the digital information. Uh, well, I just took an example of a vessel. Well, the vessel has various equipment, digital equipment and devices, but the uh, vessel itself is a certain tool, but uh, there are various intangible data, so such as the level of uh, contamination and so on. Well, these are intangible pieces of information. In this case, very it is very difficult to turn them into digital information. So this is the list of the equipment which can turn such an information into digital information. I will not elaborate on this slide because of the time constraint, but anyway, if you can equip a vessel with these facilities and the devices, then you can probably turn 
uh, analog information into digital information or intangible information into digital information. That's why the digitization means. Then I'd like to move on to digitalization. Digitalization process itself is rather complicated as well. Most of the cases, uh, there are three different categories. The first is how to create a system. So this is about the concept and design and optimization of the concept. And then the setting various parameters which will go into the system. And uh, the definition of those parameters would be included here as well. So this is about the concept and design. And the next one is the construction and integration of data. Well, here are various techniques. The most commonly used one is model-based control, such as MIL, SIL, and HIL. So how to put information to turn it into data. And the last one is operation. Model-based conditioning monitoring would be condition monitoring would be the last stage of this operation, this fully digitalized operation. Well, this equipment can utilize digitized information. It will digital information like optimization of the route or optimization of the functionalities in on board or the maintenance of the equipment and devices with model-based condition monitoring you can do the optimal maintenance planning so the last part so the last category is operation for digitalization but what uh, we want to achieve in this session is integrated digital platform creation. That is why I'd like to take another example here. When we talk about e navigation automated ship, autonomous ship, or smart ship, the typical process that would take place would look like this. First, you would do digitization which will lead you to digitalization. Then uh, you would need to create an interface. Then uh, based on that interface, uh, you can introduce various processes. And uh, the basis, uh, the processes would be diagnosed and analyzed through analytics. That's how you would come up with a solution. When uh, we use hydrogen as a fuel, but it, that needs to be stored and supplied and burned. So for each module, what would take place would be quite different from what we ha have seen so far. So each module needs to be digitized and digitalized and then becoming smarter. Otherwise, it will not be possible for us to achieve this fully integrated digital platform. Let me start with the fuel supply unit. The fuel injection equipment. As the previous presenter mentioned, hydrogen has such a high energy density, so it requires such a huge volume. That is why that such an information needs to be digitized and then put on a smart platform. And the next piece would be the propulsion system. In the future, through the electrification, there will be uh, multiple different propulsion systems. That is why these are these need to be integrated. And at the end of the day, what well, this will determine the ship behavior and even the ship behavior needs to be digitized and digitalized only then we can say that we have truly digital integrated platform but uh, this kind of thing cannot be done by any single organization or any single entity 
now is the time for Korea and for the technology leaders throughout the world to put their put together their collective wisdom to create a fully integrated platform. So with that, I'd like to move on to the next slide. This is the list of participants of Open Simulation Platform pursued by DMV. DMV has focused on this initiative over the last two years. So when hydrogen becomes the mainstream fuel, we would have would need an open simulation platform or the fully integrated platform. So this is the thing we have to pursue at this stage. So this is my last slide. As you can see here, we have Hyundai uh, Heavy Industries, Xiamen, and major Korean players, as well as the global players in the shipbuilding and the shipping industry. So, and uh, we have uh, several technology leaders and major manufacturers and the integrators. So all these parties are communicating with each other and interacting with each other to pursue collaboration. Only then, only based on such a collaboration and a cooperation that we can have, we will have a fully integrated processes and the platform. With that, I'd like to conclude my presentation. Thank you.